All right, Alexander. Eric Swalwell. Eric Swalwell. This guy, for three, four years, was next to Adam Schiff. Next to Shifty Schiff, this guy was the number one proponent of the Russiagate hoax. He was on every channel 24-7 talking about how Trump, his family, his associates, his entire inner, inner circle was compromised by Vladimir Putin, the Kremlin, and the Russian government. They were, in essence, Russian spies. And anyone who supported Trump was a Russian spy. Actually, during a Tucker Carlson Tonight interview of Swalwell way back when Tucker was first on air, because Tucker actually doubted the Russiagate narrative, Swalwell pretty much openly called him a spy of the Kremlin, as did Adam Schiff. So that's how, that's how uh, nutty this guy was. Now, keep in mind, he ran for president. He ran for the, uh, at least to be the candidate for the Democrats. He, he's sitting on the, uh, the House Intelligence Committee, or at least he was. We have breaking news now, Alexander, which is uh, saying that Eric Swalwell, breaking, Democrat U.S. House Rep. Eric Swalwell is removed from the House Intel Committee after Chinese spy link. And that leads me to what this video is about. And that is the fact that Eric Swalwell, um, at a bare minimum, was uh, compromised by a Chinese... Uh, operative um, at a bare minimum. Once again, all roads, I hate to say it, all roads go to China. All roads lead to China. Absolutely. I think what is becoming increasingly ch clear is the extent to which the Chinese uh, government and its intelligence and security services and um, its business community, which is, of course, to a very great extent, directed by the Chinese government, which is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party, has embraced the Democrats. I'm using the word, I'm choosing my words very, very carefully. And uh, that embrace extends to targeting particular US politicians and political figures, including Mr. Swalwell, who had, shall we say, an intimate connection with the Chinese operative, Miss Christine Fang. And as you correctly say, he was one of these people who was constantly, endlessly, repeatedly going on and on about Russiagate, this fictitious narrative about how Donald Trump had uh, uh, supposedly or allegedly or reputedly been compromised by the Russians. And we found out that this was all a total fiction. And at the same time, as he was saying all those things, he was, in fact, as we now know, in very, very intimate connections with the Chinese and with one of their operatives, too. So it's quite remarkable. And it's very interesting that he's just apparently resigned or been removed or something has happened to him. So he's no longer a member of the House Intelligence Committee. But of course, he has been a member of the House Intelligence Committee throughout all of this period. He was uh, um, very close to Adam Schiff. I mean, there were two, uh, the two of them were working together on much of the Russiagate things. And uh, it's amazing. The, the most astonishing thing to me is that here we have a connection between a US politician, a well known, prominent US politician, and China and the US media world says almost nothing about it. And we have a completely fictitious, made up, invented connection between Donald Trump and Russia. And for three years, with Mr. Swalwell at the center of it all, we were hearing about virtually nothing else. So the contrast is astonishing. And it does make one wonder, and not just about you know, what the interests of the Democrats are and what their connections across the media and the uh, worlds of finance and big tech are, but also what the connections between China and all those, uh, all those uh, uh, worlds are too. And it does suggest to me that there is a great deal of embarrassment and unwillingness on the part of many people in the United States, many powerful people, to face up to the reality of Chinese influence, possibly because 
Mr. Swalwell is not the only one to have been compromised in this way. No, he's not. Actually, we know that uh, this operative compromised at least two uh, mid Midwestern town mayors. And when I mean compromised, I say once again, wink, wink, compromise. You know what I mean? Okay, let me read you a, a title from the Daily Wire. And the, and the removal of Swalwell from the uh, House Intel Committee actually was coming from McCarthy himself. So uh, Kevin McCarthy, the House Minority Leader, called for Swalwell to be removed. Top, and this is the title, Top Congressional Leader Calls for Swalwell to be Removed from Congress After Chinese Spy Bombshell Story. So McCarthy called for it. He got it. The story was um, broken. Actually, it was broke by, uh, by Axios, who did, a, once again, they did a really good job in breaking this story. And I have to, once again, preface this by saying Axios is in no way a pro-Trump outlet. If anything, they're very anti-Trump. Um, let me read you their title of the story when it broke. Exclusive, suspected Chinese spy targeted California politicians. The article goes on to say, among the most significant targets of Fang's efforts was Representative Eric Swalwell, Democrat, California. And they're referring to the operative. Her name was, uh, was Fang Fang. And in the U.S., she went by Christine Fang. And they have three bullet points. Fang took part in fundraising activity for Swalwell's 2014 re-election campaign. According to a Bay Area politician operative and a current U.S. intelligence official, Swalwell's office was directly aware of these activities on its behalf. The political operative said that same political operative who witnessed Fang fundraising on Swalwell's behalf found no evidence of illegal contributions. Number two, federal election commission records don't indicate Fang herself made donations, which are prohibited from foreign nationals. Point number three, Fang helped place at least one intern in Swalwell's office, according to those, according to those same two people, and interacted with Swalwell at multiple events over the course of several years. Now, Tucker Carlson also uh, kind of broke this story in a way alongside Axios, and they they can, it seems like they can confirm that the intern was also a Chinese operative that was placed in uh, Swalwell's office. So an, an operative directly into his office was placed by Fang. This seems to be standard procedure of how the Chinese operate. And, um, and Tucker Carlson also noted that much of this was and is being revealed by uh, Chinese party leaders and, chi and top Chinese academics. And he played a video of a Chinese academic who was, in essence, explaining how they infiltrate the United States. And, and for lack of a better word, I, I don't want to say maybe bragging, but I, I mean, he was going through it very casually as to how they work the U.S. system so that they can get the desired outcome. And um, it was it was really stunning to, to listen to his speech and people in the audience were laughing and they were, you know, they were kind of very, <laughs> very casual about the whole thing. But uh, it's extremely serious. But it seems like the Chinese, and Tucker Carlson during his segment yesterday, it seems like the Chinese, um, he said the Chinese are winning. He says, no doubt about it, the Chinese are winning. And when I watch that academic's uh, speech and that video, they know they're winning and they're having a good time winning. Th that, that was the vibe that I got. They're having a good time subverting and undermining the U.S. It, it's, it's a really strange dynamic and um and it seems to me that the chinese are having an easy time doing it a very easy time given the identity politics the euro racist euro white supremacist you're bad you're evil um politicians on the take orange man bad uh trump is is authoritarian it seems like they're they're capitalizing on all these things and amplifying them. And it's just such an easy cakewalk for them. Well, absolutely. Can I just say, I mean, you, you were reluctant to use the word bragging. I've seen that video. Uh, I've also read, by the way, uh, Glenn Greenwald's account of this uh, video. Uh, I would have no hesitation in saying that this Chinese academic, who's clearly a very well-connected person in Beijing, I have no hesitation in saying that he was bragging and I mean, he was laughing at the US and so was his audience. I mean, they were basically describing a situation where China is able or, or Chinese operatives or Chinese people, you know, have uh, absolutely open door 
and massive influence in Wall Street, in big tech, amongst the political leaders. And he was all, he was saying quite quite openly and cheerfully and happily about how China was able to fix all its problems with the US because it had so many friends there. I mean, that that's in essence what he said. And what was most disturbing of all was that as he was saying this, he was saying, well, you know, we had all these problems with Donald Trump, who was a rather awkward character and wasn't very easily influenced. But now that, you know, the situation has changed uh, uh, and we're seeing, you know, a new administration coming, well, it'll be back to the to business as, as usual. I mean, that seemed to be that seemed to be the mood in this. I mean, you said that they are winning or at least they feel themselves to be winning. I mean, you know, look at that video and you will see. I mean, they're absolutely enjoying it. And they're looking to the United States and they're saying to themselves, well, you know, it's an extremely easy country. You can you can find and make yourself friends. All you need is to provide some money and some nice contacts. And it's very straightforward and easy thing to do. I, I'm just going to add one thing, by the way, about now. I'm not making any suggestions. I'm not saying that anything happened. But if we're talking about political donations to U.S. politicians. It's absolutely true that, you know, if they come directly from China, from Chinese officials or from Chinese businesses, then that would be illegal and that can't happen. But given how Chinese business is now intermeshed with the um, U.S. Um, financial oligarchy and you know the political and business community, if you like. And it, I, I would have thought it was extremely simple if China wanted to find money for some U.S. politician to find U.S. business people who would be provide, prepared to provide that money for them because those US business people would know that they would make that money back from their connections to China. So you could probably do this, I would have thought, very straightforwardly through the back door. Now, I have to ask this question again. Where is the FBI in all of this? What is the FBI doing? I mean, they, they are prepared to investigate relentlessly a presidential campaign on the strength of an idiot doc, uh, uh, dossier put together by a sleazy character in London based on the drunken you know, rantings of uh, a young woman in Cyprus. And they're not seeing the fact that the Chinese intelligence agencies are planting interns in the political offices of prominent US politicians. I find that very strange and very remarkable indeed. Final question. I wonder what would have, how they would have treated Trump. And when I mean they, I mean big tech, media, Nancy Pelosi, Eric Swalwell, Adam Schiff. I wonder how they would have treated Trump if he decided not to uh, can you say sever or at least a divorce yes. from China? Yes. Well, I think this is actually a very good point because I, I, I'm going to make a guess that, in fact, that the China issue has been an extremely important one, given how important it is for many of the people, you know, in, in, in the Washington, you know, political system, to, you know, how important maintaining this link to China has become personally for them, if you like, the people in the swamp. From their point of view, um, here is this man, this outsider, this person who's not part of the political elite, this person, Donald Trump, he comes along, he says, you know, I'm very unhappy about our relations with China. I think the Chinese are taking advantage. I want to impose tariffs on them. I want to bring back all the factories from China set them up here, pay the American workers decent wages by giving them proper jobs once again in U.S. Uh, factories run by U.S. companies. This is profoundly shocking and, uh, um, you know, concerning 
to many people who are doing very well out of this arrangement with China. And it may very, very well explain much of the anger and loathing towards Trump that, uh, uh, that, we, that we have seen. From, their, from the point of view of these people, Trump was upsetting a very cosy arrangement with which they had become extremely comfortable. And of course, in Mr. Swalwell's case, more comfortable not just financially, but in other ways too. So, uh, so you know, perhaps it's not so surprising when you think about it that Mr. Swarwell was one of the most extreme and vocal of the Russia Gators. Distraction. Look this way so you don't look that way. Well, indeed. Exactly. Exactly so. All right. Alexander Rickers, thank you very much, guys. BitChute, Odyssey, Rumble, please go to those platforms. You'll find all those links down below. I'll also pin those as uh, the first comment in the comment section as well and subscribe to us there. PayPal, Patreon, subscribe, star. Bitcoin, please help out this channel. And uh, the Duran shop, pick up some merchandise and Patriotic Legacy, Duran 20, 20% discount. You can get the blue camouflage Patriot Beacon 3. You'll see a picture for that right now on the screen. And in that contest, you can also pick up um, a Durant t shirt. You can win a Durant t shirt as well, our logo t shirt. When you use the code Durant20, that gets you 20% off the Patriot Beacon 3 flashlight, the best flashlight in the entire world. It ships all over the world. As well, you'll find the link for that in the description box down below. Absolutely. Made in the United States, ships all over the world. As Alex says, the best flashlight in the world. Uh, uh, a wonderful tool also that does many things. It has a compass. It has uh, um, a seatbelt cutter. It has a sort of hammer function. It's solar powered. It's the best flashlight in the world. And uh, everyone should have one. I certainly do. I use it all the time in the night when I'm walking my dogs and obviously when I'm driving my car and also also for many things up and down the house. For example, when I go into my cellar. So it's a best flashlight. You have to have one and you will get one of our amazing Duran T-shirts with it if you if 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 you do. So please join that competition and also come to our shop. Find the great things that we have there our amazing uh, Duran mugs, like uh, this one, with the flag of the United States, but you can find them with the flags of many countries. Um, Greece, this is a smaller mug, um, Britain, and also with the uh, designs of our friend Dimitri Economou in Greece. So South Africa, I think it was Alex had the South African flag there. And you've got, you get the best shirts, the best sweatshirts, the best hoodies, like the amazing hoodie I'm wearing now. And you will also find hats and ebooks and other great things. And please do find us on our other platforms because it's becoming ever more difficult to provide content um, in, in, you know, in, in, our, in our major outlet uh, in, on YouTube. And also, also uh, support us through Subscribestar, Patreon, and by coming to our programs. All right, Alexander Merkers, thank you very much. Till next time, everybody, take care.